the dear friends, um, transformation of uh, public government in the world is uh, the name of the topic. So. Uh, we let me uh, recognize Mr. Volodin, the speaker of the State Duma. Uh, participating in this session are also Maria Voropayeva, representative of the Youth Parliament with the State Duma, Vladimir Isakov, first secretary of the Leninist. Uh, uh, Komsomol of the Communist Party, Vasily Vlasov, um, uh, the youth um, organization of the Liberal Democratic Party, a member of the State Duma, Denis Davidov, uh, the representative of um, uh, Young Russia, uh, and uh, uh, we have got a representative of the, munis of the municipality here. Uh, uh, Vyacheslav Yurevich, over to you for a few words uh, to us. Maybe uh, you want to use a microphone. Uh, is there a microphone here? I know there are microphones uh, uh, around the hall for questions. Maybe you can uh, pass one to us here. Okay, so the discussion has begun, let us uh, believe. Uh, so let me congratulate you uh, all on such a wonderful festival. This festival is uh, a rarity for this country. Uh, it's the third time it's being run here, and as you know, uh, uh, it was in uh, 1985 that it was um, held the last time. Uh, before that, it was 1957, and now it's now. Congratulate you on this event. Uh, um, uh, I would like to thank all those who decided against staying at home, who mm, detached themselves from their computers and decided to uh, make good use of the time here. Why use <clears throat> is because I do hope that um, uh, uh, following this discussion, there will be an assignment for us uh, in the form of initiatives, and certainly a special thanks go to those who covered thousands of um, kilometers uh, coming here to Sochi. And, and I'm not only talking about representatives of foreign countries. Uh, take Vladivostok in the Far East uh, um, or Novosibirsk. It's also thousands of kilometers. So good for you all. Thank you very much. Mm. Mm, because on uh, a lot depends on uh, how efficient you are here, uh, what friendships you make here, because those will uh, uh, be kept with you for the whole, for your um, whole lives, no matter what jobs you have or positions you hold, because this is uh, how you can benefit from the youth festival and. Uh, Speaking about the festival, let me uh, tell you that the interparliamentary union session uh, was completed yesterday, where 156 parliaments of different countries of the world participated, with 96 uh, uh, speakers of parliaments and about 70 deputy speakers uh, of parliaments of, um, uh, of different countries. Uh, uh, let me tell you uh, what we spoke about, about you, uh, the dialogue that we sometimes fail to maintain uh, uh, probably is the, the result of the fact that we didn't have such dialogues when we were young, and therefore very often now legislators cannot sit down at the same table and talk. So therefore being able to talk and to listen is a very important property. And 
this is something that you are acquiring here at this festival of the youth and students. And therefore, no matter uh, what you become, this is uh, the prophecy that you will carry on with uh, um, yourselves. So more dialogue. This is my recommendation. Uh, so let me... Uh, um, pass the microphone back to Mr. Primakov, the moderator here. You will have many microphones, I'm sure, to ask your questions to us. And uh, I'm sure uh, that uh, before you start grilling us a little bit, um, it would be uh, good if uh, uh, um, leaders of our parliamentary fractions, young leaders, um, uh, would care to uh, say a few words. You seem to be sleepy a little bit. Oh, now I, I hear uh, that you are waking up. It's uh, uh, he who walks, covers the road, and you want to walk up uh, the hill. So more optimism from you. This is what we expect. Uh, thank you, Vyacheslav Viktorovich. Uh, so, uh, Maria Voropayeva, ladies first, uh, um, over to you. Please introduce yourself. Uh, well, you can do it seated or standing, whichever is better for you. Uh, uh, good morning, participants in this panel. I'm happy to welcome you on behalf of uh, the Youth Parliament with the State Dumans. The transformation of public government is the topic of this discussion. And for me personally, this trans transformation can simply not be possible without the uh, civil sector and youth. We represent uh, young um, people's organizations, very different um, um, politically and otherwise, but um, there are many things that we have in common, and first and foremost, the desire to make this country better, and therefore each of our organizations uh, uh, provides an opportunity to young people to grow, grow professionally among other things. Um, uh, uh, well, doing real things uh, uh, for regions. Uh, uh, I represent uh, 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 one of the regions that's thousands of kilometers away from Sochi. Uh, and, uh, well, I represent the Jewish uh, um, autonomous region. Uh, in this country, opportunities um, uh, have been created for young people, irrespective of where they live in the Far East or in Central Russia, Siberia, or the South. A lot depends on a young person themselves. And um, yes, youth parliaments uh, are a good platform for this self-accomplishment, and I'm happy to tell you, well, proceeding from the message uh, of um, Mr. Volodin, I would like to tell you that um, um, the Youth Parliament will be extending and expanding, and that will actually create more opportunities for self-accomplishment uh, outside the State Duma. Uh, there will be new initiatives, uh, young initiative-driven people, representing students, communities, uh, uh, professional teams, and so on, and will be able to do more good uh, things for this country. And um, the legislative uh, forum in November in the State Doom of, of, um, of the Youth is another event uh, for people who um, uh, uh, think politics, and it would uh, really be good if we'll be looking uh, together for effective uh, um, solutions for this country. Thank you very much. Thank you. Um, Maria, now um, let uh, uh, us give the floor to Vladimir Isakov as a representative of Komsomol. Um, you have uh, actually had um, your party has has run uh, two festivals, so therefore it's over to you to speak uh, on behalf of that party. Thank you very much. Uh, the festival movement and the festival itself is a 
um, uh, brainchild of the Soviet Union. Marina sta Maria started with public government, but the role of the young people in uh, um, society, um, uh, well, is uh, something that is very much on the agenda. How can a young person be successful today? Let me remind you, dear colleagues, uh, and you, I'm sure you feel that uh, you're, uh, you're that your, uh, yourselves, we discuss uh, the socialist revolution and its uh, uh, anniversary. We have uh, Lenin Hall, the Che Guevara Hall. Irrespective of your um, attitude to those historic personalities, um, uh, Vladimir Lenin, uh, development of capitalism uh, in Russia, fundamental uh, work of his, was written by him uh, when he was 25 years old. I will not speak about that person. Well, that was really a huge public personality, and he started very young. Ernesto Che Guevara, uh, a Cuban revolutionary and the leader of the revolution uh, there, was very young. He was under 30 when he became um, a minister in a young Cuban government, which, uh, as you very well appreciate, um, was uh, uh, actually under very much pressure um, and uh, was uh, actually very much isolated, and that was organized by the United States. You remember the time of the Caribbean crisis. And up until this uh, this um, point in time, Cuba is an independent socialist state, although um, it's a small island. It's a small island of freedom and uh, very dear to us. Another historic personality, Miss, uh, Comrade Kosygin, many of you remember uh, that person well. Uh, uh, who uh, led the government under um, um, Brezhnev. He was 30 when he became uh, chairman of uh, the Russian Federation government um, and worked closely uh, uh, under, uh, with, with Stalin. Uh, well, uh, setting uh, uh, grand tasks uh, to yourselves is important. Well, young people are looking for truth. They are seeking social um, uh, justice. Uh, when you set such uh, um, big goals, uh, when you are young, you, you, you believe you will be able to cope. Um, well, uh, contemporary uh, young people, maybe they have got their own criteria of uh, uh, success. Uh, well, becoming a young uh, deputy or uh, MP, Vasily Vlasov is the youngest uh, deputy of the Duma or uh, MP, uh, or have an expensive car, travel uh, uh, in uh, to foreign countries. And I'm not talking about Vasily. Here, when, when I speak about traveling abroad, I'm talking about young people at, at large. Um, uh, but let's not forget that we live in the biggest uh, country in the world. Uh, it's been for 700 years uh, out of um, the country's history that we've been f fighting, we've been at war, and never in uh, uh, greenhouse type of conditions, as it were, you know. Um, our individual uh, 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 prosperity and well-being, uh, well, that's not what we need to strive for. We have got wonderful projects, uh, the banner of our victory, open lessons at uh, schools where we tell uh, students about the lessons of the great pa pa patriotic war, and, um, well, using stencils, using um, and color and pencils, and they draw uh, the banner of victory. We have got another one, the land of talents, where we pr provide up uh, opportunities to low income children from low income families. Uh, uh, talents uh, have an opportunity, young talents, to perform in Moscow or um, participate in sports tournaments uh, free of charge. Uh, they uh, act 
actually uh, visited our Duma. They had meetings with their outstanding athletes, and it uh, was a wonderful opportunity for them. And it's very important for things not to boil down to individual um, successes. Um, a young person needs to uh, feel that they are not only changing their own individual world, but um, someone else's uh, lives uh, uh, changing them for the better. Well, I represent uh, Komsomol, and our uh, bedtime reading will always be Ostrovsky, uh, Ostrovsky's book, um, How Steel Was Tempered. Unfortunately, it's not um, part of set reading now. And I quote from the book, well, let us no, never be sorry um, about um, pointlessly lived life. I'd like to cite the song, uh, or we'll keep on living, whatever. Uh, and it is really very topical today. And uh, now I'd like to give the floor to Vasily Vlasov from a Liberal Democratic Party. And uh, indeed, uh, that is an extremely uh, good example. Vasily is 22 years old, and today, when I was elected, actually, we have the law. So just take a look. Uh, uh, this person is your age. Actually, everybody is the same age here. But Vasily is a fantastic example of success. Uh, dear Vyacheslav Viktorovich, dear colleagues, this is the phrase with which I start my presentation in the State Duma. And people came up to me before the lecture. I came a little bit earlier to communicate with everybody. And they kept asking me, well, you're very young, you're 21 years old, and what indeed can you say about young people? What could be the ways for development for them? And is it good to be a deputy at 21? And whose interests will you represent in the State Duma? Very well. Let us start with the deputy. Well, who is the deputy of the State Duma? What do we need him for? So he represents the interests of the electorate, and those can be different people, young and old, men and women, people of different nationalities, and at the same time, they may be of different age. And my colleague said uh, something about the uh, cars of uh, the State Duma. Well, as a matter of fact, I used for my election com campaign just the Volga, the Russian Volga. Volga. And I did not invest huge money into advertising, into leaflets, and I didn't pay people for them to meet me near the metro station. I just met my electorate near the metro. I had my team, and we walked in my district. And when the people met a young person, a student of the Moscow University, they said, well, what kind of a deputy are you? We have more experienced people, and they have a huge baggage of knowledge. But, well, I wouldn't argue that. But today, for the statistics, for the sake of statistics, I've got to say that we have 30 million of young people, and they have very different views. We discuss um, blockchain and uh, artificial uh, intellect and the Council of Bloggers and so on and so forth. And all that relates to young people. Or we can uh, um, have different attitudes to our older generation, but young people know better what we are interested that in. And I'll give you an example. Uh, so we're discussing at one of the roundtable discussions history, uh, uh, the history book, the uh, textbook on history. And I'm telling, well, you just understand it. People certainly read books on history, but mostly they learn from social uh, networks uh, such as MDK and Borsch. Well, uh, uh, the older generation of uh, bureaucrats uh, actually do not know anything about that. But young people, even with the cheapest smartphone, they knew a couple of things about that, or even more. And they have a chance to subscribe to different telegram uh, channels. They can communicate in WhatsApp and so on and so forth. And the main goal, I'd say, the main goal of this forum and of this particular meeting is for you to communicate more between yourselves. Oh, well, we came out with our presentations and left, and you'll see us sometime later. But the uh, 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 feelings you have after this forum, all those new acquaintances, that is something absolutely invaluable. And here, 
And we've got to emphasize that the meaning of the young people is extremely important. And young people have to discuss the policy relating to uh, young people. And I'm one of the uh, young people in the uh, State Duma who passed this exam. Um, and, uh, uh, well, I will. when you know how to pass the exam, you know the procedure itself. You participated in that yourself. And you face the problems which you uh, actually had to face. And you are very well aware that when this or the draft uh, will be discussed, well, actually, you can't do that with young people. And my colleagues are quite right when they're discussing the experience of their parties and the Liberal Democratic Party actually uh, has something to boast of, where the youngest faction in the Duma, well, maybe somebody will say that you do not have enough experience, but somehow, as for the policy with the young people, youth policy, we do do have something to say. And we have our chairman uh, of the committees, Viroslav Milov and Gzirov. And these are the people who started working very early. Well, actually, I started my political career at 15 years. And who could have ever thought that uh, uh, my Vasily Maximich uh, will really become uh, a deputy of the State Duma. And I'm not uh, saying anything about the quotas for young people, because immediately people will say that these are just people who are having the pool, and uh, that is just to have an image that there are young people in the Duma. But I know the whole thing, and I uh, keep to meet my electorate every day. Every day I come out into the street, and there are my uh, people, my voters. And that is an absolute treasure for any deputy. When you know that at any age you reached a certain, you've reached a certain level, and you can uh, help people, and you can implement projects, well, actually, that is something which is not just to make me proud, uh, but I can say that I'm 21 years old. But oh, when you take a look at young technocrats, well, that is something which is being discussed today. Take a look at uh, Austria. They have a chancellor at 31. And in Sweden, they have a young deputy of 22. And this youth agenda, it is being discussed all over the world. And uh, I'm driving to a close. Uh, uh, it is necessary to discuss all these topics today and now at this wonderful forum, and I wish you to be successful in your discussion. I wish you success and uh, do uh, address us and we'll uh, uh, keep in touch. Uh, thank you, Vasily. There was a very uh, significant topic uh, which was raised, uh, policy and uh, politics and uh, social uh, left. So, um, uh, there is a whole machinery which was uh, actually uh, structured by uh, the parties uh, and their factions. And now I'd request Denis Davidov to speak up uh, from United Russia. Thank you very much, colleagues. Uh, I'd like to congratulate you uh, on this festival and thank you first and foremost the foreign delegations with whom we communicated very closely and will keep on communicating. Yesterday we met uh, representatives of Brazil, Vietnam, and people from Brasilia asked us, well, they are not uh, working in politics, but they work with the Students' Union of Brazil, and they said that tomorrow they're ready to come to power and they would like to have our experience, us to share this experience with them and we spoke about leadership, we spoke about quotas, and many people, particularly those who live in Russia, asked this question. And Vasily uh, mentioned something about the quotas, and I'd like to come out with my own opinion. I, uh, any leader will be born in a certain competitive environment, and it will not be possible to become a leader when, let's say, 80% are participating and 20% are not. And those 20% will never be able to become Olympic championship champions. Uh, and the same thing happens in uh, politics and wherever, in science or whichever area you take. And the question. Uh, relating to quotas uh, is not topical today, because today uh, we um, uh, have our way to cover. So I'd um, like to speak about 
uh, our primaries and the floor for the young people where we speak up. And uh, uh, it is very important for everybody who is present here to participate in the elections and to uh, determine together with their supporters, with the voters, those particular people who will be uh, on the list as candidates for the elections. And if we take a look at the simple experience of the current year, well, let's take Kamchatka, and there are people here present. Well, five people were elected, uh, and uh, some uh, of them are in the party, some are not. And in Moscow, the youngest head of the municipal uh, district is Mr. Davidovich. And uh, he was elected in a very difficult campaign. And in Yakutia, in the largest uh, territory of the Russian Federation, uh, uh, several people, 70 people, uh, became members of the municipal power. And all that uh, is thanks to the possibilities we have today. And without the competition which we have today, it's impossible to create a high-quality representative core in the um, uh, body of power. And if we speak about the state level, level, also we can speak about the campaign of 2015. And people from the uh, Young Guard uh, also participated in the elections and became deputies. And uh, I'd like everybody to uh, have such an opinion about the politics that nobody uh, owes anybody anything. And you can only count on the support, support locally. And um, when, for instance, uh, we recollect uh, the elites or clans in politics, uh, that is the time which has already passed. And that is right. And today, we have maximal competition and maximal representation of uh, regional communities and uh, um, people from the regions in the State Duma and in the regions. And dear colleagues, I go back to what I said at the very start. Well, indeed, the greatest possibility for all of us uh, and uh, the um, First of all, is evidence of that. Um, Mr. Putin is uh, actually doing quite a lot with regard to the possibilities and opens up new doors for us, for everybody who came to the festival. Let us uh, thank everybody who came to the festival for their presence here. And another thing I'd like to add, uh, dear friends, Dear colleagues, uh, we discussed uh, with uh, you the possibility to continue our dialogue on other floors, and maybe we have to think uh, about the creation and the name of a certain informal union of young people, uh, which would uh, uh, join, uh, which would unite the representatives of uh, students and young people and pol parliamentarians. That is something very topical, and we should start a discussion for that. And everybody uh, should have a possibility for a self realization. Thank you very much. And if you think that we're thinking just about uh, how to start working in politics and everything will uh, end in success, well, you'll see that the experience matters quite a lot and str competition and struggle means a lot. And Elias Sviridov will tell us uh, about his work and he is head of the municipality of quite a huge electoral uh, district uh, in Taganka. Uh, hello, everybody. I welcome you all here at the festival. It is very pleasant to see quite a lot of such young and interesting people. And when four years ago, together with our colleagues from different parties, we visited Ecuador at the previous festival of youth and students, we uh, had a great desire for the festival to come back to Russia for the third time. And uh, this long way, covering uh, four years, well, was discussed by quite a lot of organizations, uh, and uh, everybody was saying that it would be good for the festival to come back to Russia. And uh, the fact that a festival took place um, uh, is actually due to the efforts of Vyacheslav uh, Viktorovich. Well, nobody was uh, trying to praise Vyacheslav Viktorovich uh, so far. But anyway, I'd like to do that. And certainly, Mr. Putin took this uh, 
uh, decision, but the person who believed in this idea and it made it possible for this festival to happen is Vyacheslav Volodin. Thank you very much. And uh, as uh, for myself and social lefts, uh, well, uh, being elected as a municipal deputy, uh, well, uh, for the first time I was elected in uh, uh, 2012, I was 19, and now I was re-elected, and I can say that quite a lot of original deputies, municipal deputies, uh, are young people aged uh, up to 35. And uh, uh, that happens because we have a democratic system, uh, electoral system, and uh, well, uh, actually when people are working with the electorate, well, uh, some people do win, some lose, but I live uh, in my own district. I know people in my house, in my street, and I should say that uh, we start working with every house and every uh, doorway. So, and the yard has become actually a unit of political space. Social lefts uh, work not only in politics, it is really a priority for young scholars uh, who are supported by um, presidential grants and different programs. That is youth entrepreneurship and also the fact that there are special projects to support young entrepreneurs and thousands of startups all over the country are developing successfully. And um, a great share of them uh, are, uh, are conducted by young people. And uh, we do have possibilities for the youth to work. And I'm happy that we can exchange our experience and our skills and uh, success stories. And maybe we can invite to our regions our foreign guests. It is very important to say that uh, we had a special regional program of the festival, and our guests visited quite a lot of uh, towns and cities, and they saw not only Sochi and this wonderful floor, which was created for the Olympic Games, but many other cities and towns of Russia. And I'd like to say in the end that what Denise was uh, speaking about, uh, that we've got to use this festival, this unique experience uh, of friendship and exchange of experiences and growing uh, uh, interstate uh, ties. And all the contacts in future should be really developing, particularly because of the fact that we have Facebook and uh, social networks and so on. Uh, and, uh, well, I came to know a girl from Slovakia, and I told her, find me on Facebook. And so she did, and now we'll keep in touch. So I wish you all to have lots of new friends all over the world and more and more contacts. Thank you for your attention. Uh, dear friends, uh, if you don't mind, we'll go over to questions and answers. And now I'd like to remind uh, to you that um, uh, we have Mr. Valotin with us, uh, a speaker of the State Duma. And here we have young politicians, and we'll discuss quite a broad spectrum of issues. So are you all ready? Well, let us start with uh, the person who has the red telephone in his hands. Well, um, yeah. yes, uh, I mean you specifically. Well, rep well, my name is uh, Dmitry Nesterov. I'm from Leningrad Oblast, and I'm from Lenin Komsomol of the Russian Federation. And I have a question to Vyacheslav Viktorovich. Vyacheslav Viktorovich, uh, the main topic of the festival is 100 years anniversary of the Great October. And on the 16th of October, we had a day devoted to this particular date on, in the forum. And um, it was somehow not very, no, not very much noticed by the participants. There was only a meeting and a march of the participants in the left movement. So what is your attitude towards this date? 
uh, as a matter of fact, in uh, mass media, Matilda, uh, the uh, film is discussed much more than the uh, 100th anniversary of the Great October. Well, uh, it'll suffice to say that uh, we're discussing here those uh, issues which are um, of a problem nature. If the problem is resolved, well, uh, then there is no use to discuss it. If uh, Matilda is being discussed and that is a problem, well, that is good. It means that we do not uh, discuss those problems which are used to um, the troubled people in the 90s, for instance. Well, as for the 100th anniversary of the Great October uh, Revolution, certainly that is an event which we're discussing. Um, and uh, uh, it is being discussed in the State Duma, and as soon uh, as uh, elections passed, uh, we uh, started saying that uh, 2017 is the year of the Great October Socialist Revolution. And we do uh, come back to the discussion of the state, and we base this discussion on the idea that this particular date, this event would consolidate all of us, not, uh, uh, not vice versa. Uh, talking about the date itself, I don't think that would be the right thing to do. It would be more correct uh, to speak about what then um, was done in the country during the Soviet time, the first cosmonaut. The victory in the Great Patriotic War, large-scale major projects, that's what needs to be discussed. When we talk about revolution, it's always blood and victims. It's always tears. During the Civil War, 5,600,000 people, our countrymen, our great-grandfathers and great-grandmothers died. Hunger, uh, that's also a consequence of the revolution. So I don't think we should talk about the revolution itself. But uh, once again, stating the fact that the country survived that, that the country launched um, huge projects when we were the first country to recognize political rights of women. Not a single country before us uh, had done that. Uh, take Switzerland. And everybody believes that this is an advanced country, but it was only in the 70s of the previous century that women got political rights. This country, however, did that in 1917-18. So when we look at the revolution, among other things, from this perspective, we'll find points of convergence uh, um, actually making us uh, see that revolution is uh, a path to nowhere. We need to proceed along the path of democratic choice, uh, but we need to think of why revolutions happen, why people go on the barricades, uh, and let's actually pay tribute to the those who did so much for the country after uh, the new system took root and a young Soviet state uh, uh, managed to overcome the challenges and uh, uh, resolve the, uh, uh, the issues it faced. So that's my position. Uh, Vyacheslav Viktorovich, don't go back to your seat. I'm sure you'll be, you will be fired with lots more um, uh, questions. Uh, uh, colleagues, uh, please ask questions uh, uh, to our young uh, leaders, leaders of um, um, the young uh, sections of parliamentary, parliamentary factions. Uh, Vasily has shared his experience. Vladimir has got a lot to share with the, because he were, used to be elected to the Tula um, um, city Duma. Uh, these people here, you know, uh, actually had to uh, um, 
go a long way uh, uh, competitive uh, to, you know, to become an MP, a deputy of uh, the Duma. One needs to be wise. One needs to be experienced, you know, representing a party of the opposition to lead a municipality. Uh, well, that speaks a lot. Um, uh, of uh, the, the person. Uh, well, still a question to Vyacheslav Viktorovich. Uh, good morning, Roman Erzaev, Young God, to men city. In the past two years, the question of um, uh, um, transferring uh, state functions, public functions to uh, non-government organizations. Well, what kind of KPIs are going to be set to this process? Uh, how do you uh, comment upon this situation and what is the State Duma doing towards that? Thank you for your question. Indeed, um, two years ago, um, federal law was passed uh, and um, uh, uh, it says that um, via discussion, a decision can be made as part of the state order, municipal order. Some functions, some services could be provided by NGOs, and the legislative framework is there to support that, and it is now up to the regional and municipal authorities to actually identify those who will uh, um, provide uh, um, public governance functions and services. Um, sometimes uh, an NGO can do that better uh, than a state-owned organization, so they can be better at um, uh, providing and uh, uh, executing such a service. Sometimes it's it's even cheaper, but we have little experience, practically none, in this area. We are starting pr practically from scratch, and uh, many people believe, uh, uh, why don't we follow the uh, well-beaten be path uh, rather than transfer such functions to the NGO level, and I don't think that is right. I think we need to discuss positive practices, best practices there, show uh, good examples uh, of our NGOs doing a good job of implementing uh, uh, public governance uh, functions. We do have legislation for that. What we don't have um, is uh, um, being active in uh, transferring uh, these fu functions to NGO, specifically in the social area. And uh, we at the State Duma uh, need to um, hold public hearings, uh, uh, and you need to actually be involved in that dialogue and maybe um, initiate uh, some topics. Uh, we have got examples where the regions have started doing that. We'll invite those and we'll discuss how the law um, uh, can be uh, enforced in the in this respect. Uh, uh, so maybe uh, regions could share with us uh, their experience. M and maybe the law needs to be amended in some respects to become more effective. The president, uh, Vladimir Putin, was the first to um, state that for the first time we need active citizens who want to um, accomplish the themselves in the social sphere, and we need to help them do that and create conditions for that. So this is what we need to be doing. Thank you very much. When Vyacheslav um, uh, Viktorovich was uh, answering when he spoke about the um, implications of the revolution and when uh, women got their rights, women in politics, well, you, uh, you want to ask uh, a question. 
please. Um, good morning, um, uh, Mr. Um, Lorden. Uh, I am Leonora. I represent uh, Khabarovsky Cry in the State Duma. Two questions to you. So the first thing, the uh, question is about the political rights of the women v- uh, recently at the Interparliamentary um, uh, Forum in St. Petersburg. The rights of women were discussed at large there engagement in politics and expansion of that. What do you think about it? I think that we do need to create conditions for equal participation of women in politics, uh, uh, I mean, equal rights, uh, equal opportunities for men and women there. If we talk about uh, this country, uh, well, uh, uh, women actually hold the the most important jobs uh, like Valentina Matvienko um, uh, leading our upper house, uh, um, the central bank, uh, um, uh, Ms. Nabiulina, Ms. Golikova, the audits uh, uh, chamber, and uh, uh, quite a few others. So if we talk about uh, such uh, high standing positions, Uh, uh, Well, women are quite active in decision-making in politics, um, but this uh, topic is still on the agenda, women's involvement in politics. Um, Politics, indeed, are rather driven by men, and it's more difficult for women to actually be on a par with men. um, In 2003, I initiated um, a bill which actually was shelved for uh, over 10 years, and now uh, the State Duma seems to uh, have noted it. And Oksana Pushkina and Irina Rodnina, our um, female MPs, they have provided their view on that. Uh, and we do hope that um, uh, the bill that I initiated after Um, being revised is going to be heard by the Duma. Uh, What is it about? When we discuss uh, elections uh, to the State Duma among um, uh, other bodies, especially when we talk about uh, majority districts, women are um, harder put there. Uh, Well, why? Because women are less aggressive, maybe less assertive, uh, something that men probably are better at, and therefore men sometimes Uh, get preferences and more uh, men are elected as a result. Uh, So we studied the foreign experience there, um, looked into that topic uh, deeper and uh, thought about what conditions need to be created for women to come to politics. Uh, uh, If we take um, collegiate bodies, um, you know, women have got their own view of the issue sometimes they see what men cannot uh, see. They can balance what men cannot balance off, actually. Thank you very much. I like it. I like this approach so much. But at the same time, uh, for you uh, not to think uh, that uh, preferences need to be created for women. No, they should be conditions, equal opportunities, uh, so that um, Vasily could have a chance to be elected to the State Duma, uh, to Vladimir to uh, be elected to the municipality, to you. So conditions need to be created. And once they have been created, then it's going to be okay. Let me explain what I mean and just give you an example. In 1989, actually, I got my PhD degree and uh, 
after my postgraduate studies, my friends and colleagues at the university suggested to me that in 1990, in March, I uh, should run for uh, the uh, city council in Saratov. And I told them, look, um, uh, our procedure is such that to be nominated, uh, you actually have to go through the party committee. And then the party committee would recommend it to uh, the team we work uh, Mm, well, and uh, I was actually a fellow uh, with the university, so that meant and the faculty, the dean, um, and I was actually uh, assistant professor at that time um, who had just got, uh, I was a person who had just got their degree uh, only starting my career, and normally, uh, uh, you know, when such people ran for an office at that time, you know, um, it would be more experienced people could win. But um, there was a law uh, about elections, uh, and one of the uh, clauses in that law was nomination from where a candidate actually resided. Um, and it was that particular clause that enabled me to run. Uh, I collected signatures. Uh, well, people came with their passports. Uh, Mm, proper minutes were kept, uh, and uh, even with all that, with complying with all the requirements, I was never registered. Uh, so you know, it was all no, no it, it was not uh, you know walking along a. Um, uh, uh, rose uh, uh, garden path. Uh, uh, we know from physics that action actually creates counteraction. Um, so we got mobilized as a result. We ran a second meeting, all collected another 200 uh, signatures, but we ne needed to uh, find uh, uh, a place to hold it in, so it actually needed to be uh, where you uh, were domiciled. Another um, uh, body was gathered by the uh, city uh, committee. I was not registered. Uh, we only had a few days left, uh, and there was more counteraction from us, uh, so we ran another meeting on the very last day when it was uh, um, regulatorily possible. So all the signatures were there. All the needed representatives of the party committee were there. Uh, and uh, uh, the election committee representatives were the deputy chairman of that committee. Uh, that person was one of the deputy principals of a school. And uh, he said, uh, look, um, uh, this uh, is uh, uh, who you are running, uh, who you are competing with, uh, um, uh, a party committee representative, another important person. And uh, uh, they said, why should you be afraid uh, of uh, someone who's just graduated uh, um, to a degree? And they allowed me, and I scored 56.5%, and I won. Uh, so therefore, uh, colleagues, uh, when you hear people say, let's create preferences rather than, or issue preferences to people, rather than conditions to create a social lift uh, for them, that's wrong. We need to create conditions, you know. It's not a welfare program after all. Um, then it's up to you to offer to your people, your professional skills, uh, your willingness to um, uh, take upon yourself very clear commitments and so on. Uh, so there shouldn't be a situation when um, 
uh, a candidate uh, uh, well complies with all the procedural and uh, legislative requirements and they are not um, allowed to run. Uh, I represented the Far Eastern region. One more question, please. Uh, um, uh, today, so this is uh, our youth chamber in the, in the parliament. Yeah, and we're going to expand it uh, with the State Duma. And uh, we'll have the representatives there of uh, young public organizations and parliamentary parties, those who are present, are present here, and we'll expand the participation of regional youth parliaments so that uh, it uh, would be a more efficient tool uh, of parliamentarism uh, with the participation of youth. And it is very important for us uh, that you formulate the agenda, which would be interesting for us and for those whose interests you represent. Uh, uh, allow me, please. Well, the Far East. Oh, well, the 21st century is a priority. So what do you do in the State Duma for the Far East to become uh, attractive and interesting for the young people and for us not to have such migration as we have now? Uh, so if you represent the youth parliament uh, of the region and you know about the decisions taken at the federal level, the State Duma over the period of two years uh, passed a number of laws with regard to the Far East and Hectar and the development of economic zones. And uh, with regard to the creation of development cooperation for the Far East, and all those decisions were taken, not just accidentally. The Far East is the development territory of our country. And we have to create a uh, conditions for attracting investment and also for self-realization of those people who are working there. So here we've got to have tax preferences, tax benefits, and uh, other decisions which will allow us to do this. And now we've got to pay tribute to those uh, representatives of the government, to Mr. Trutnia, Fyr Petrovich, um, uh, that they've done a lot in this direction, but that is just the start of the way. And we have to do quite a lot and to take decisions which will allow us not just to develop the territory but also create comfortable and good conditions for the life of the people. So if you have ideas, well, uh, do not just uh, keep them to yourselves, uh, share them. Uh, would you like to add something about the role of women in uh, politics? So that is a wonderful example. Well, uh, the role of women in politics, well, while I'm in a men's company, well, it is difficult to speak about uh, gender equality, but I'll try to. So I was given the floor, the first First, given the floor, so we have certain advantages, not preferences. And uh, with, with regard to this, I'd say that we're speaking about young people about in policy, but the greater problem is young women in politics. Uh, and uh, the situation in the country sets other challenges before young women and young mothers uh, who are willing to go into politics. It is very essential to create special conditions for the education of people to um, uh, have more kindergartens. And when a woman is sure that her children will be developing and get proper education, uh, they will have uh, more chance to work in politics. Uh, well, we've got to remember that we have an international uh, festival. And now I see the flag of Zimbabwe. Is it right? Do I see correctly? Thank you very much. I, I recognize Mr. Speaker, sir. My name is Anastasia Antlovu. I am Zimbabwe's Deputy Minister of Tourism and Hospitality Industry. So it is an honor for me to be in the session, which is uh, whose guest speaker is uh, Mr. Speaker, sir, because while I'm Deputy Minister, I'm also a member of Parliament. I bring you greetings from Zimbabwe and from my president, President Robert Gabriel Mugabe. And please allow me to start by congratulating the Russian Federation for hosting this massive festival. <laughs> Mr. Speaker, sir, through you, I also recognize all members of the panel, and I would like to say that I've attended two festivals before this one, 
one in Caracas in 2005, and another one in South Africa in 2010. And I can confidently say that this has been the best festival ever. Well done, Russia. <laughs> Mr. Speaker, say, of course, through you, I extend Zimbabwe and Africa's gratitude to the great leader, President Putin, for hosting this festival in this manner. Uh, I re realize that we don't have much time, but I would like to also, through you, Mr. Speaker, say thank your team that you put together to work with Africa in terms of putting together our delegations. It was not easy. We learned some very unique ways of hosting festivals. Everything was done online, very paperless, a great lesson for Africa. Specifically, Mr. Speaker, say I would like to, through you, thank the team that was being led by Alexei Spivakov and the rest of the team. They did a great job on behalf of the Russian Federation. I do not have a question but to say that we have a lot to learn from the Russian Federation. I realize there are young parliamentarians here. We do not have a quota in our parliament in Zimbabwe. So I think that there's need for us to continue this dialogue in terms of how can we strengthen the ties between the Russian Federation and Africa beyond this festival to also see the lessons that can be drawn in as far as gender equality is concerned a very important topic in our lifetime. So I just wanted to say, well done, Russian Federation, and thank you once more for fighting from the corner of developing nations at the UN Security Council. And we look forward to Russia and other progressive members of the Security Council, such as the People's Republic of China, to lead and represent us in the reform agenda of the Security Council. Long live President Putin. Spasiba. Thank you very much. Uh, there was no question, but it was very, very pleasant to hear. Well, I think it would be right uh, oh, that though there was no question uh, uh, in uh, this uh, speech, I think there was a proposal, and to come out with the comments or with regard to this proposal, uh, it you said that it is uh, necessary to have more active communication and structure our relations more actively. And we took a decision to hold a conference in uh, uh, Guinea, uh, which uh, is chairman in the African uh, Union. And uh, that uh, will allow us, together with the African countries, to discuss quite a lot of issues uh, which um, are significant for you and uh, uh, our colleague, colleagues and parliamentarians of the African countries. And uh, for our part, we'll do everything for our relationships become more friendly and will be open to each other. And in this connection, I propose that this format, which we have today, uh, we actually found a very good format, uh, that of a dialogue. And I hope that we'll have it and uh, we'll uh, discuss that with our colleagues in the State Duma. And hopefully, uh, uh, representatives of youth organizations will be working uh, in this direction, and they will be participating uh, in that work. So, and uh, young people from the youth parliament, and uh, those young people and yet new friends whom you found here will keep in touch with you and will have a possibility to communicate within the framework of parliamentarian context. And maybe those who are present uh, here today will be able to participate in this conference, which will discuss uh, the development of our relations. And another thing which is very important uh, is what you said about the role of uh, the Security Council and also the role of our bilateral relations. And uh, that is the example of how at the level of human communication we can find a, um, a common agenda because we're discussing things, we find solutions. and. Uh, 
uh, we see that the uh, power centers, the form of our power centers, are trying to stay at the top of the pyramid. And that leads to tragedies. And the voice of Africa should be heard. And we see two uh, people with the nose cry, the cry mayor. And do, do you have uh, different questions or one and the same question? A microphone, please. Microphone. My name is Anna Rubel. I'm representative of the Parliament of the Republic of Crimea, and uh, I work in the uh, Federation Council. And I'd like to thank you for changing the format of the State Duma, and the regions are also trying to follow suit, and the work which uh, you uh, do to change the image of a deputy could be really seen. It, you have a wonderful page in the Facebook. Uh, and we see you in f social uh, networks. Uh, I was among the first 16, those who are subscribed to that page. Uh, but oh, we're aware uh, that to uh, raise the image of the deputy and to have trust to him, we need to use special tools. Uh, well, we have quite a lot of work. And by the way, uh, the Republic of Crimea is uh, um, very active. And we have young people uh, aged up to 35. And we're, we're already working. And we uh, uh, we're aware that we need different tools for our work. So now we're thinking about how to bring back the powers uh, to our parliaments and uh, for the deputies to understand that they might get um, a feasible assistance. So uh, very important it is to resolve the issues of uh, land and taxes. Well, we have the experience of the regions of uh, the Tula Oblast and of Leningrad Oblast when at the level of uh, the uh, subject of the Federation, the budget is adopted, and uh, the parliamentarians have to follow the assignments of their electorate. So could you raise this question at the level of the State Duma. So we do have the understanding of our government, but while communicating with young deputies from other regions, we see that their conditions are very, very difficult. So can we discuss that at the federal level? You raised an issue which is uh, very topical, and when you started speaking about uh, the problems of the regions, and you mentioned the regions, but in fact uh, the list is uh, a lot longer. Well, let's take Krasnodar area, and uh, we uh, have these issues on the agenda of the work of the uh, deputies. Uh, well, the list of powers of local uh, government varies from 19 powers to 39. And depending on the decision uh, taken by uh, the uh, regional assembly, it could be different. It could be broader or, or not or narrower. And it depends on the possibilities of the municipal entity uh, which you represent and uh, which uh, might have a budget, uh, well, uh, from uh, the state government, donated by the uh, state government. The budget may be self-sufficient sometimes, but that happens usually with uh, major uh, cities. So we've got to uh, discuss uh, all these issues uh, with regard to each particular city. Uh, we cannot have uh, general solutions for all municipal entities. Uh, we have about 25,000 municipalities all over the country, and each municipality is uh, different, and they have different conditions and different uh, uh, geography, and the population is different. So uh, I think that we've got to think of more efficient relationships between the State Duma and municipal deputies, and they were already proposals. Uh, voiced by Nikolai Hritonov uh, about the necessity to hold hearings with the participation of the deputies of, this, of the municipal level. 
Uh, with regard to budget federalism, let us get together and decide when oh, we are able to do that. If you are not invited, anyway, do come, uh, saying that you got a personal invitation. And um, uh, thank you for uh, the question. Uh, it is really very important, and that is something which is our concern. Uh, but we have a, we have other problems. Well, Irina spoke about that. For instance, the budget and uh, the amount of budget. Well, uh, please uh, come up with your commentaries. Uh, it is not just my business to answer the questions. Oh uh, well. Mm. Indeed, it would be quite good for each deputy to have certain funds uh, so that uh, they could implement the assignments of uh, the electorate. In 2012, we uh, had a law passed under which the deputies agreed upon all the capital repairs and all the works done in the region. Well, I think that 90% of applications which I get from the uh, people are related to those problems. And we were actually participating in the decision-making process, but without the approval uh, of local authorities, we cannot do anything at all. Uh, and uh, in Moscow, we resolved this problem in a different way. Well, I have uh, a request. Mikhail and Elia, I work on educational issues uh, in the university, and uh, uh, I have a request from the young people. Oh, we really count on young people of all Russia, and uh, the, youth, the young people feel that, but there are people of different ages, and particular concern as uh, coming from uh, the young people from 14 to 19. They cannot get registered on uh, the website. A lot of them are very talented, and they're willing to implement their own youth projects. But unfortunately, only we can work with them within the framework of our volunteer centers. So we'd like to request um, uh, to work with such uh, young people and for them to have a possibility to get registered on the respective website. Uh, well, uh, what about um, these young people? Well, these people must become will become young people, and they be they are going to become officials, public officials, and they must strive at uh, turning Russia into the great power of the world. Well, I'm 16. We, we, we have a young boy here who is 16 years old. We can ask him respective questions, and then we'll have more material uh, to discuss that. Uh, the, the age is really wonderful. Let us welcome this person. Well, my name is Ilya Aksenov, the youth organization of uh, Liberal Democratic Party from Moscow. Uh, I have a question. What is your attitude towards the young people voting at the municipal elections starting with the age of 16? You know, I will not give an answer to you uh, to this question. Uh, I don't really know. I think that this question should be uh, discussed, and we should discuss all uh, pros and cons. Uh, but uh, if there is uh, uh, a need to discuss it and uh, to consider this issue, then we've got to discuss that. In one of the social networks, in one of the social communities, we actually discussed that. And young people who were younger than 18, they were only all for it. They're interested in the political life of the people. You know, I, I'll tell you more. This uh, quest, this issue is being promoted by my colleague Vlasov, and he finds more and more uh, pros for this. So actually, the one who is walking will cover the way. And uh, let us discuss that. Oh, well, oh, we must discuss that. So it is really uh, good that we are discussing this and we see the growing social and political. Uh, activity of the young people, and immediately we uh, have the issue of leadership. And uh, so I have a leader here, and what is your question about? Uh, who is there behind you? And uh, there is inscription, leader. So let's give the floor to him. 
uh, Vyacheslav uh, Viktorovich. Uh, good afternoon. My name is Ilya. I'm from Omsk, Siberia. Uh, well, I represent uh, young god of the region, and uh, young people are very active in the elections. Oh, unfortunately, we didn't manage to become deputies, but uh, next year we'll be political and we'll participate in the elections. So what are the qualities of the leader? What do you think? What should they be? Thank you for your question. Uh, I'll start. Uh, with what you uh, started. You said that everything is fine with young people, that you are participating in the elections at, and you represent the young guard. But you lost the elections. Uh, you lost the elections to uh, the state, uh, to the original Duma of Omsk. Uh, the uh, Communist Party won the elections there. Uh, that is the only region where young people uh, from uh, United Russia lost. And in our country, uh, we do have uh, possibilities for representatives of all parties. And in your region, representatives of the Communist Party actually won. And that is evidence of the fact that uh, despite differences in views, Despite the fact that we're members of different parties, uh, candidates may win. win. As for the qualities uh, of a politician uh, uh, needed for a parliamentarian, it must be a decent person, and he, he or she should be a professional, and uh, uh, they should be able to learn and that is something Mr. Putin said, actually. And uh, another thing I'd like to say is that a politician uh, should uh, love uh, his or her country, and that is a necessity. And whatever he does, he should be doing in the interests and for the benefit of his country. And uh, you've got to combine these qualities, whatever work you do, Thank you for your question. Uh, uh, well, qualities of um, a leader. Uh, well, you leaders, why don't you take up those questions? Thank you. I fully agree with Vyacheslav Viktorovich, uh, the speaker of the Duma. But let me add my opinion. The politician ne needs to be responsible uh, and accountable for the decisions that they make. Um, also, um, not indifferent. Uh, uh, so if you do something, you need to be responsible for it. So, uh, uh, the, the, the colleague said they lost, uh, but those who win, uh, they need to be responsible. They mm, get a positive feedback from those who supported them. So um, being not indifferent, being partial, and uh, uh, integrity, certainly. So, so I understand this is the panel's consolidated opinion. Okay, your opinion. Um, I first I denied you the floor, but now it's yours. I would like to welcome uh, the members of the panel and uh, the speaker. I would I Beslan uh, Zadrab. I'm coordinator of the Young Guard in North uh, Caucasian District. Uh, 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 well, a question to the leaders of uh, young uh, people's organizations and one to the speaker. A question to the speaker first. In this country, uh, we have got over um, uh, 16,000 people uh, who are uh, uh, sick uh, with uh, often type of um, diseases. Uh, maybe um, procurement uh, efforts need to be centralized because uh, those people um, need uh, uh, uninterrupted supply of medicines. Uh, uh, regions are not coping. Uh, well, this needs to be escalated to the federal level. Uh, let me tell you uh, that uh, the State Duma is uh, discussing that, and we are discussing that with the uh, 
uh, health care ministry and the government of the Russian Federation as a whole and uh, shortly will understand if um, uh, uh, these powers uh, can actually be taken over by us from the regions, but at least this is on the agenda. Well, as a young pe person uh, myself and a member of the Young Guard, uh, I have a question to the leaders of different uh, um, uh, parties, uh, the youth organizations. So uh, such organizations need uh, not only be expanded, but also deepened um, uh, at the project level. What kind of projects would you like to highlight? Uh, give me just examples of of three, let us say, that would resonate with uh, uh, the people at large and uh, whose benefits um, are felt. Well, colleagues, uh, over to you. Uh, you are a young God member, and you listen to Denis Davidov probably more, more closely uh, than to others. I mentioned the three projects in my uh, remarks. Um, uh, uh, well, one is um, um, uh, civic and uh, patriotic work, uh, also um, uh, youth initiatives in other areas. So uh, the banner of our victory uh, was along patriotic lines and um, lessons um, at school. The important thing is what is being told about the victory banner, who actually uh, 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 put it up and so on. Well, uh, replicas of that uh, banner could be made and uh, people could uh, have it. The Land of Talents is a creative project, so young people, uh, mostly from low-income families, are involved. Uh, there are three nominations, choreography, vocals, uh, and uh, recitals, and the, the winners are sent to uh, Moscow and our leader Gennady Zuganov um, attends them and uh, was the winners. And the third project is uh, um, uh, in uh, sports. Uh, it's uh, um, uh, telling young people about um, uh, Soviet athletes' achievements and there are things to be proud of, certainly. And uh, um, uh, young people uh, run their own tournaments, uh, and the winners went to the State Duma where they met with um, renowned renowned athletes of the past. So these are the three main areas and and, and projects there um, that are our main uh, efforts, very productive. Uh, um, thank you very much. So we are open uh, to co collaboration with whoever feels like it. And so we have got uh, representatives of the Young God and um, United Russia. Uh, 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 um, uh, come up with your uh, projects uh, dedicated to 75 years of the Young God, uh, young, uh, the anti-fascist organization during the war. Uh, um, there's uh, the Ivan Turkenich School in the Voronezh region. Why don't we go together there? Uh, well, let me not speak about Krasnodar. Krasnodar, you know why we we can't go there massively, but there are places, uh, memorial places to go where we can pay tribute to those who gave up their lives uh, uh, for our happiness. Now, uh, Maria. And, uh, talking about projects, and I invite everybody to participate. Uh, two years ago, the um, Youth Parliament with the State Duma launched uh, the project, uh, which is uh, called I'm Proud of Russia Every Day of My Life. So um, it's been for two years that across Russia, we are testing young people on history, and for the Youth Parliament, is 
is a, this is a huge project that brings together various public organizations and political parties. We're open to collaboration. The last te test we run was on the 22nd of April. 354,000 people from 47 countries participated. Uh, that was a success story. Next uh, testing will be on the 9th of December, um, the day of uh, our uh, country's heroes, because it's only on uh, it, its history that a country can build uh, up its future. Um, well, uh, uh, the uh, Liberal Democratic Party uh, youth organization has got quite a number of projects. The most popular of them is the project that's being run for uh, 20 years now. This is a so, the so-called train of advocacy. Uh, it's a big train that travels uh, uh, the whole country, and a lot of young people, uh, uh, you know, they they welcome that because uh, because uh, uh, very often people are focused on the uh, regional uh, issues, but Russia is huge. Uh, well, certainly, uh, well, uh, not uh, not everybody's got an opportunity to travel uh, across the whole country. Country, especially given the price, the, 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 the fare of the tickets, and we offer an opportunity to to everybody to hop on in our train and um, take a look at this huge, beautiful country. That also includes the things like, uh, for instance, um, counseling or uh, professional guidance uh, for those who, who don't know which university to choose. Uh, well, uh, uh, well, we also uh, actually invest uh, uh, in our young people's education, but what we want is uh, actually for them to um, uh, work along the lines they have been trained, which doesn't always happen. Uh, well, another initiative of our party is providing um, uh, free of charge opportunities to go to museums. And um, the mayor of Moscow, Mr. Sibyanin, actually responded to this initiative. And uh, in, uh, high school uh, students and uh, um, university students can go to museums free of charge. Uh, um, one more thing. I recently came back from St. Petersburg, um, take, uh, t taking this uh, fast train sub sun from St. P St. Petersburg, and it was actually the car that I was traveling in was empty. I was the only one. Why not offer students, young people, um, tickets that had not been sold free? Well, um, so maybe. That young, young, young people would be interested, I'm sure. Young people want to travel their country. You know, they, they, they have so many, so many impressions, they start writing books after that. Another uh, project, big project, is uh, actually collecting um, clothes, uh, uh, second-hand clothes. And this is something that's uh, being run globally. But we haven't had, uh, uh, we haven't had um, that in Russia. Uh, so I have got a container near my office, actually, where not necessarily even secondhand clothes uh, can be put. Uh, well, because, I mean, if they are secondhand, we would, uh, uh, we would uh, process them to be clean and so on. Um, thank you very much. Um, uh, uh, let me uh, uh, respond to Beslan and to other colleagues what uh, Young God is doing. 
Uh, we studied uh, uh, the students' population. We have got 5% of the population who are students. And we um, understood that uh, students' main requests are not responded to uh, by and large. Actually, when I was a student in Timiryazev Academy, that's Agricultural Academy, um, this is something that we understood better. And uh, uh, well, uh, universities administer administrations are not always coping, and in 2014-15, we actually set up um, a, a students' communications agencies on the campuses, and thousands of students' leaders, formal and informal, um, are there. Leaders of different students' communities are there. We ran Students' Week in Russia, based on um, discussing students' issues, and put together a work plan to respond and um, um, Vladimir Vasiliev, who led the faction um, back at that time, we provided, uh, well, submitted uh, them to, to him. So we are trying to build such a system of relationship between students and other communities of uh, the societies uh, um, that they would enable the best, uh, best and most effective ways in, to provide solutions to them. Uh, well, you remember uh, uh, what was uh, done, um, uh, suicide, uh, I mean, to fight this campaign of um, uh, uh, engaging young people to suicidal societies. You know, what we do have done, we found those young people, the parents, you know, what we found out was uh, uh, that those young people played those games on the internet at, at 4 o'clock in the morning. And this is something to um, certainly address and tackle, help uh, to such young kids. Uh, now, um, patriotism, um, I lead such projects. Um, uh, I talk to people in Volgograd, for, you know, former Stalingrad. And um, uh, uh, well, there are uh, people from the Moscow headquarters of Young God, and together with Maria Rabzakova, uh, they take care of uh, Olga Saprikina, the only young guard survivor to date. So let us give them a round of applause for that. And we have got representatives of um, um, Rostov, young guard. So they participated in. Um, Krasnodar, Krasnodon event. Um, we put together um, a volunteer book, uh, uninvented uh, history of young God. It's called, uh, and uh, we gave it to leaders of the de of all the delegations here. Um, and there's a systemic uh, work with uh, schools. Um, um, uh, and uh, this is uh, Young Voters Headquarters. Uh, in 2015, it was focused on municipal elections. Uh, in 16, on um, the State Duma elections, those who want uh, to participate in the primaries, we provide elementary knowledge uh, to them, starting with how documents should actually be prepared and how they should build their campaigns and we do it uh, free of charge we have got we, we had 4000 um, applications actually uh, and uh, 2000 of them uh, took the whole course from beginning to end and 1500 of them became mps uh, so that was quite quite effective uh, project wise thank you very much uh, in brief um, three projects we uh, have had first and foremost it was a patriotic one what does your home country begin with um, we ran it in schools like for example the best drawing or painting on that topic Um, so that was high school um, students and um, university first two years of the university students were involved. Well, uh, 
and uh, uh, they actually had to use computers for that because some of them were videoed. Another one was called I Want to Become a Mom. Um, uh, so this is uh, um, to help um, uh, 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 young girls who want to keep their child and then actually uh, raise it. Uh, we, uh, the next one is um, cultural monuments. 80,000 such commu- uh, monuments in Russia are uh, in poor shape and we rank them. As, uh, we identify those who require immediate response uh, from us from us, uh, contacting the Ministry of Culture and so on and so forth. And certainly these are elections and that is something Denise was speaking about and we have such a project, political school and closer to the political season we have uh, courses in them. So, uh, thank you very much. Uh, Well, we have uh, to recollect that it is an international uh, site. Cuba, please. Yeah. Now, first of all, my name is Jesus Mora. Uh, I'm very happy to be here. I want to to express that I agree with my sister Anastasia in everything that she speak about the festival and the Russia. And I feel responsible because until one year I was the Secretary General of UFDI, and I've been working very hard for this festival. With Alexei with Paspelo, I want to recognize his, his job because he was a very good friend. He worked very hard for this festival when he has his previous staff. Um, um, I want to say before my question, uh, two days before, the president of the friendship group with the Russian parliament met with our president of the friendship group, who is here. His name is Arnaldo Tamayo. He was a cosmonaut, a former leader of the Soviet Union. He's part of the Cuban delegation. And even in our delegation, we have nine members of our parliament. All of them are younger, too. Um, I want even to recognize that the Cuban parliament has a very, very good relationship with the both camera of the Russian parliament. We have an agreement with the Duma, and we have an agreement with the federal council. And one of the things on behalf of the president of the Cuban parliament that I want to say is that Well, let me say that I work in the Cuban parliament, and one of my tasks is, in this moment in the Cuban parliament, is to keep the relationship between the Cuban parliament and the parliament of Russia. And we want to recognize that the last December, when we have been suffering by the, the die of our historical leader, Fidel Castro, one of the, the first uh, delegations who arrived to Cuba was the delegation of the Russian, uh, and the president of the Duma was there, and we want to recognize um, On behalf of the president of the Cuban parliament and the, the president of Cuba, the, the support that we receive immediately from Russia. My question is very short. You know that for the last 57 years, Cuba has been suffering by a very, very hard blockade. And in this moment, Russia is under a big sanction. How do you, do you think that we can struggle together, Cuba and Russia, against the imperialists and engage the new government, especially the Donald Trump and imperialist government. Uh, These sanctions, uh, there is something which separates the countries and the sanctional policy does not lead to the improvement of relationship. Uh, as a rule, uh, it makes uh, such relationships worse. So we are not for such a dialogue and uh, such methods. And Cuba uh, actually suffered the first from the sanctions. And uh, although it uh, had to survive through that, it managed to resolve many economic problems. And uh, we see the evidence of the fact that you managed to over, uh, to live through the time of the blockade. And for that matter, we really can say Viva Cuba. And uh, dear colleague, you were absolutely right to say that such sanctions were introduced against Russia, and not only against Russia, but other countries too. But this 
uh, policy, in fact, uh, is destructive and uh, batters the policy of having no dialogue. And if we speak about the consequences of such policy, uh, we see what is happening in Libya, Afghanistan, Iraq, Syria. All that is the result of just one country, uh, without even consulting its own people, is trying to dictate to the world uh, some recipes and measures, and it intervenes with the internal affairs of our countries, uh, those countries which uh, you represent. And this is a policy to nowhere. And uh, we've got to do everything to discuss all issues at the negotiating table. And at UNO, you know, the international structure, which was created specifically for such cases. And when we speak about parliamentarian structures, we're doing everything for the interparliamentary relationships. Uh, be uh, structured in a more most efficient way. Uh, I already mentioned that interparliamentary Terran Union uh, completed its work. 173 countries of the world participate in that. And only one uh, country did not participate in that. Which country, which parliament uh, didn't? What do you think? Uh, so. Uh, we didn't have the United States there. Uh, well, uh, you're applauding. Well, uh, actually, you mean uh, what do they have to do there? Or uh, well, in fact, the country which is promoting this, th the democracy standards, the country which is trying to teach everybody how to live, uh, uh, it is alien to a dialogue and interparliamentary union which unites uh, uh, 173 out of 193 countries uh, in the UNO represents 173 uh, states. Uh, uh, they should be participating in the dialogue. Uh, there are quite a lot of countries, Russia and China and India and other countries, but somehow the United States uh, believes, uh, and the Congress of this country believes that that is uh, the floor which they do not need for the dialogue. Uh, and uh, when we see such attitude towards dialogue, uh, that is something which uh, results in nothing. And uh, if we speak about the budget for uh, 2016, 17, and 18, uh, we could see the uh, uh, decrease of the um, uh, domestic national domestic project. And uh, we actually uh, come out of the recession, and the growth rate has in increased, has accelerated. Uh, and uh, the figures are 2.5%. And, a half percent. and uh, now we're considering the budget of our country, and the key indicators of the budget are the indicators with regard to the status of the economy. And we plan that the domestic product will be growing by uh, 2 uh, percent and a little bit more. Uh, and this uh, highlights the fact that we managed uh, to overcome the problems and challenges, and uh, we have the same situation as Cuba. Yes, you were right to say that I came uh, to say goodbye to uh, Fidel Castro, and everybody who came uh, uh, to say goodbye to Comandante uh, emphasized that Cuba achieved quite a lot in healthcare. You managed to achieve that despite the blockade and the challenge which the free island managed to overcome. So that is what people can achieve 
when they struggle for independence and freedom of their country. As for Russia, we have done quite a lot over the past several years. Uh, we somehow managed to get away from uh, import dependence in the defense sphere. We used to buy spare parts, and we used technologies from other countries and quite a lot of other things. But now we've fully resolved this issue, and we produce uh, the uh, parts and components of our own, not of other countries. Uh, had there been no uh, sanctions, would be you continue to use uh, the uh, world uh, payment systems, uh, MasterCard and Visa. But since we have challenges and the necessity uh, to provide security, uh, financial security of our uh, citizens, uh, um, uh, encouraged us to uh, pass the law on the national payment system. And now the MIRCARD uh, is uh, issued, and everybody can use it. And uh, it can work uh, in combination with other cards. Uh, this and quite a lot of other things allowed us uh, to grow well. Let's say the uh, agriculture is growing and the growth rate is quite good, about 4%. And formerly, uh, we consumed something what Europe produced. Uh, we uh, created quite a lot of working places, but uh, we would uh, give away quite a lot of spheres to Europe. But over the past several years, we managed to resolve this issue. And today, uh, the uh, consumer basket of our citizens is being uh, filled by our own producers. And we export quite a lot of corn. And when we speak about sanctions, we've got to proceed from the fact that that is not our method to uh, keep up the dialogue. Moreover, Russia has always demonstrated to have a dialogue on the basis of friendship and relations which are based on absence of double standard. And time will pass and all these sanctions will die out. And the countries which are using such a method will just lose. And for that matter, we've got to do everything to uh, reach such an understanding. And uh, today, when uh, for the festival, more than 180 countries came, represented by dozens of thousands of young people, uh, that is a very good basis uh, for the solution for the future, because these people are those who will become politicians in future, and they will be uh, taking decisions. And uh, well, they will recollect 2017 when they came to Russia and they discussed different issues with their friends from Russia. And there was only one wish to be friends. And uh, it's very important for the politicians to have the same kind of attitude, both in the United States and in Europe, because um, the sooner they come to the understanding that it is necessary to build relationships on a friendly basis, uh, well, then they will not really have uh, severe blows on their economy, on uh, their citizens, on employment market, etc. We had to do uh, the same. We had to introduce um, uh, certain measures against sanctions. And Evgeny Alexandrovich is saying that uh, we have about 50 people who sign up for the questions and 10. Uh, Ten uh, questions uh, needs an hour. So let us take a decision which will be most fair 
and we don't want to hurt anybody. So let us do uh, what people do at a concert. Let us throw the microphone into the crowd. I think that we had quite a lot of questions from the left sector. So here, the person is having a flag in his hand. Let us give him the floor. So it is not a very objective uh, choice because uh, that is my compatriot from Saratov. So, and uh, people think that the game was not fair. So, uh, those people who are from my favorite and my native town will come up to me later. Let us give the floor to the representative of Magadan. There is a man from Magadan. So, from Cuba, we moved to Magadan. So I thought that, uh, well, somehow you will not have time for me. But it is not for nothing that I covered 8,000 kilometers from here. My name is Alexei Mustavchikov. I am chairman of the Expert Council on Economy and Entrepreneurship of the Youth Parliament under the State Duma. But in fact, why the question is quite uh, coming from Magadan? Uh, in, um, well, we have uh, a very trendy question about mining and blockchain. And in Magadan, we have very cold uh, uh, weather, and uh, we have some difficulties with the uh, uh, with the heating. Uh, well, but and we are willing to work on blockchain and bitcoins, etc. But we are interested in your opinion. We wanted to ask this question to Shavalov and Ariyshkin, and we wanted to uh, get the answer from the central bank. And uh, finally, we'd like to get your opinion about blockchain and all the related issues. It would be very interesting, and we could be able uh, to uh, work on this. Uh, indeed, digital economy is developing in a very dynamic way, and its uh, development uh, leads to huge changes. And when uh, uh, we speak about cryptocurrency and mining firm, farms. Uh, you're, we're absolutely right to raise this question because in a number of countries, uh, this fee is already regulated and other countries do not pay attention to this. Uh, well, some countries uh, stay as observers and they want to see what is going to happen in the world. We are studying this issue and moreover, we had a special seminar for the deputy, deputies of the State Duma uh, to uh, have a better understanding of the issue and, more, and a more professional understanding of it because if the person doesn't work on it, uh, well, he or she does not have any professional skills. And uh, we invited the best experts in Russia uh, to discuss uh, issues related to cryptocurrencies. And um, the, our opinion, the opinion of our colleagues, and the opinion of experts who are better aware of the issue. It is necessary to just wait and see how this trend uh, will be developing in the world. And we should not hurry uh, and uh, take uh, early solutions, take early decisions. Or we shouldn't introduce certain laws which would prohibit uh, the development in this sphere. But uh, on the other hand, uh, as for the norms which would recognize cryptocurrency, first and foremost, we've got to study issues related to security. We've got to protect the rights of our citizens to avoid fraud because uh, you see that uh, cryptocurrency uh, uh, appears in different forms, in new forms, and there are new developments over uh, the past uh, uh, period, and there are certain uh, signals which are rather threatening. Uh, we fear that um, the development will lead to some unpredictable uh, situations. And we cannot really say that we don't care about that, but we should think of what would become beneficial for the country. Uh, 
and uh, we should understand what is going on in the uh, rapidly developing digital economy. It is essential for us to avoid the appearance of uh, various pyramids, and we have to think of uh, how to avoid difficulties in the situation, and the central bank is working on this, and uh, the experts and the government were all involved in this kind of work, and uh, Igor Shuvalov uh, is in charge of the issue, and the government, for its part, is trying to fi find certain recipes and come out with proposals what to do under the situation, and we want to be in the trend for the development, and on the other uh, we should be able to protect our uh, citizens from such rather dubious schemes. On the whole, a digital economy that is a benefit and the development of it gives us new potential. Uh, and uh, it is very important for us to formulate ourselves new proposals and uh, introduce new content, then we'd be in the front line. And uh, by the way, speaking about the internet, uh, we got a lot of benefits from the internet. If we take uh, the information component, uh, we have uh, the Russian browser and there are social networks, uh, and uh, they're using digital economy in medicine. And, uh, well, uh, at the start of the season, the State Duma passed some 10 laws with regard to digital economy in the sphere of medicine and transport, but our approach should be balanced. And you study uh, all the sides to the problem. So on the one hand, the mining farms are uh, attractive, uh, it is cold in Magadan, but don't be uh, too much carried away by the idea and, um, uh, you know, uh, you must not be uh, taking certain steps without having studied them properly. And next year, I think we'll see the solutions which will be worked out and will take steps um, uh, in that direction. You know that in Japan, uh, the decision was of one kind. In the United States, it was something different. And I do not think that uh, their solutions will be supported by you, because immediately the question with taxes arises, and there are property issues. So uh, let us study this issue. If you have certain ideas, then uh, very well. Let us exchange information. We have a special uh, board, a special council to study digital economy. And uh, then let us search for the solution. Uh, law on uh, the youth. Well, everybody keeps referring to it. Uh, is it a panacea? Well, what if it is, what should go into that law? We have a present here, a chairman uh, of the sports and uh, Tourism plus Youth Committee, one of the youngest uh, leaders, but well, certainly he cannot compete with you, Mikhail Dikteryov. He's also an MP and he's involved in uh, drafting uh, the law on the youth. And this is one of the topics for a future forum that we are planning to run under the auspices of the State Duma uh, and the Committee on Sports, Tourism, and Youth uh, will be involved. And if uh, uh, we'll su we succeed in uh, uh, coming up with something that's doable uh, in that law, uh, uh, that's one thing. But if uh, such a law will remain just a beautiful declaration, you will be the first to say we don't want such laws. Uh, 
Uh, we uh, will certainly want uh, that law to be uh, useful. Maybe you can share something about the, use, the law used uh, with us. Uh, dear friends, this session has been running for two hours instead of an hour and a, and a half. Uh, Vyacheslav Viktorovich, I'm sorry, we'll have to be wrapping up. Um, Uh, well, let me say a few words about that law. So this is going to be a framework law, but I'm afraid we want uh, to have a law that young people will be happy with. Uh, you know, if uh, we we don't want to rush it through, uh, we want to work more on it because we want uh, Um, uh, starting opportunities for young people to improve in accordance with that law, housing uh, opportunities, uh, employment opportunities. Uh, for this to be to to to, to happen, um, we need uh, to. Uh, carry out huge work, uh, uh, engaging different uh, agencies and committees. Well, as for a um, strategy on the youth, we have got uh, the fundamentals uh, um, for po uh, policies uh, for the youth. So we'll, let, let's proceed gradually. Dear colleagues, there are a number of topics that we are in the process of um, uh, discussing whether they will find their way into the law on the use or some other laws. It, it isn't as uh, so material. Uh, so these are matters of housing policies and support for young families. Uh, these are matters of um, employment uh, for young people after uh, graduation from universities and vocational schools. Uh, these are the uh, key topics. So if we find effective solutions uh, Um, there, well, just consider that two-thirds of that law uh, have been taken care of, but um, uh, the programs that are uh, uh, in progress, uh, one is the Uh, housing uh, program on uh, mortgage uh, support. In some regions, uh, um, there are, uh, for example, some benefits specifically for young people, uh, uh, but that works better where the budgets uh, allow that. Uh, there are regions where the budgets don't. Well, let's discuss those topics. Let's uh, not uh, save them off. Um, once uh, um, we have uh, run serious discussions of that, they will certainly uh, find their way into the law. Well, we'll have to be wrapping up now. I'm sure uh, the questions will never be exhausted. Uh, this whole festival has uh, platforms to